Good morning, good afternoon, everyone, depending on the place from where you have joined the webinar today. So I am here, Richa, Education Support Manager at ACCA. Our session is designed to support you with performance management paper, where our expert will take you through the latest examiner report, sharing his brief insights with some tips about upcoming 20, September 23 exams, and also answering your questions live. I'm very pleased to be joined by our expert tutor, Steve Willis. Before I hand over to Steve, I would like to cover a few housekeeping items very quickly. At the bottom of your screen, there are a number of buttons you can use. There is a help icon on the left, which provides resources and information to help you resolve any technical issues you might experience. Icons for the slides and media player are also available. You will need to see both of these during the webinar, so make sure you have selected them. Attendee chat function is there, so you can engage with fellow webinar attendees. That's the icon on right-hand side. Resource list, the icon looks like a file symbol. If you click on this, you will be able to access resources relevant to today's webinar, including the direct links. You can rearrange your screen to suit you and resize the windows if you need to at any point if you are not able to hear what we are saying or you cannot see any visuals please refresh your browser um registering for this webinar means you will be sent an email tomorrow with details of how you can listen to it again and uh, so don't worry if you miss something or you have any technical issues you will be able to access the recording I'm going to hand over to Steve in a moment and will be back with you towards the end of the session. In the meantime, if you would like to ask ACCA or Steve question, any question, then please click on Q&A button, which is the middle icon at the bottom of your screens. Please note, we cannot guarantee responding to everyone directly, either verbally or <laughs> via web chat, but we hope that the questions we share will be helpful to everyone. Handing over to you, Steve. Thank you, Richard. Hello, brilliant PM students. I'm glad you're here. I'm looking forward to spending an hour with you sharing my tips. My name is Steve. I've been helping people like you for over 20 years pass these difficult exams. It's really um, my honor to help you achieve your career objectives. I'd like to say thank you, ACCA, for inviting me to, to, to share my thoughts on PM as well. That's also an honor. guys. 19. What's 19? 19 days left until the exam. On the one hand, not a lot of time. On the other hand, you can achieve a lot in 19 days. Okay, you can you can achieve a lot. So at this point, just put the past in the past. Doesn't matter what you did, what you didn't do. If you are resitting, you have 19 days to achieve your objective of getting a pass on PM. You guys can do it. Now, PM is no joke, people. 40% pass rate last time. Four out of 10 people successful. It is a serious exam. And that is why we are here. I'm going to share with you my tips, tips I've picked up from the examiner's report, excuse me, other examiner's reports, and from my experience helping thousands of people pass PM exam. Guys, today we're going to rock. Today we're going to put PM in focus. We're going to talk about the exam approach because tackling this exam in a systematic way is very important. I'm gonna share with you a lot of tips on OT exam technique. This is where the trouble is, people. It's not in section C. People do worse in section A and section B. So we're gonna focus there. Um, <clears throat> Talking about, we'll also talk about constructed response exam technique as well. We're not going to ignore it. Okay, and of course, I'm going to answer your questions at the end of our webinar. Now, 
Guys, are you resitting? I would like to know. Please click on the screen. Let me know if you are resitting right now. Click in the screen, not in the chat window. You guys are clicking yes or no, okay? I've got 1% of you. Everybody, please click. Give me a click. I'm standing by. Standing by for a big bunch of you to help me out. All right. A lot of you are resitting about 60 40, okay? Resitters. Don't feel bad. A lot of people resit. I had to resit pretty much. Many of my colleagues, if not most of them, had to resit at some point. It's a normal thing. Most important thing, though, is to learn from this experience so it doesn't happen again and to fix it so you can clear it. At the end, I'm going to tell you what I did to fix my resit problem. I think I failed financial reporting three times. Okay, so I feel your pain. Guys, jumping in, exam approach. Guys, time management is essential to this exam, just like it's essential at work, okay? You do not have unlimited time at work to complete your tasks. So ACCA exams are no different. Guys, we got three hours for this exam. You really need to start in section A, people, in section A, you're going to get those 15 questions. All of the main syllabus areas will be touched there. So you are warming up. Okay? Now, stay positive. You need eight out of 15 to get a pass. There are going to be some difficult ones. So your objective is to get through the easiest ones in the 50 minutes. And I'm going to show you what, what that means, OK? We're going to look at some of this in a little bit, OK? Easy questions first. Flag the more difficult ones. When you're done, you come back. You guess at the most difficult ones. Uh, and at the end, you give them a try. Okay, so easy marks first in section A. Then you jump over B and you go to the constructed response questions. You got the two of those. Very important. Have a quick look at them. Check one, check the other. Oh, transfer pricing, performance evaluation. Ah, I like performance evaluation. So do the easier one first, but really limit yourself 34 minutes each question. And if it's incomplete, that's not a problem in section C. You don't get a mark for the final answer. They mark you step by step. So team, A, then to C. Then you go to what I think is the most difficult part of the exam, section B, where you get the three scenarios. Guys, in section B, there is a disparity between the difficulty levels of these five questions. Each scenario has five questions. So you spend one seven, 17 minutes on each scenario, and you want to do the easiest one first. Often, that's not the first one. It's towards the end. So you scroll through, and you want to find the theory one. It might, be, it might be a little tricky, but you can do it faster. Quest, the first one might be a fill in the blank. Give me the um, throughput contribution, uh, the throughput accounting ratio for two products. That's going to take a long time. All right? So section A, easy marks first. Section C, 34 minutes per scenario. OK? Section B. 17 minutes. If you follow this approach, you're going to have some buffer time at the end. 
then you go back and you clean up section A because maybe your memory will have been jogged because you, 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 you've been thinking and you can go back and then scoop up some more work, some more marks. Guys, that is the time management approach. Um, so we're gonna clear the easy questions first in section A, then in section C, often the easiest mark is the discussion mark, okay? So if you're doing variance analysis, part A, do all the calculations, and then part B, evaluate the performance of the manager with some information given. Guys, do the discussion first. If you are resitting, try doing the discussions first. End with section B, do the easiest three. You're not gonna finish all of them in section B. So just accept that, okay? Easy marks first. Last 10 minutes, clean everything up. Okay, guys, objective test questions. This is the problem area. Guys, here's a question. Is it easy or difficult looking? Guys, easy or difficult? What do you think? Tell me in the in the in the in the um, tell me in the chat window, you guys, what do you think? Easy? Guys, I think this is an easy looking question. Easier. It's short. I can read it quickly. Okay? I can guess at it if I need to. Now, when you get the statement questions, okay, it is critical that you eliminate before you go for the, the, the best answer. Always eliminate. So we're talking about budgeting systems. Now, I want to eliminate some of them. Look at the first one. A budget that is easily attainable will always motivate the staff. Well, I'm always skeptical of always. And if it's easy, I don't have to work harder, right? I don't have to work harder. So my, my performance won't change. So A, A doesn't look good. Um, what do you think about the last one? Managers focus only on meeting the budget. They will always act in the best interest of the company. Well, things can change. Maybe there are non-financial implications of decisions that outweigh a financial implication. So I'm also always skeptical of always. Guys, the third one, participative budget takes less time than imposed. No, if we let our junior, if we let our subordinates get involved in budgeting, we have meetings, feedback meetings, lots of email. So team, I'm going to always be eliminating and then I'm arriving at the best answer, not the perfect answer. Team, give me a thumbs up or a smiley if you recognize elimination before you go for the correct one. Great. Now, when you are practicing over the next 19 days, it is critical, people. I want you to make a list like this. When you get your practice questions correct, put the topic in the correct list, put the incorrect topic in the bad list so you know what to study. So keep a log of what you are getting right, what you are getting wrong. Now, here is a question, people. Is this numerical or is this theoretical, people? Break even. So you always read the requirement first 
And if there is a template or a formula, we always deploy that formula before we go on, right? So break even revenue, cost volume profit. We got to have fixed costs divided by contribution per unit. So you write that down in the notepad, you write that down on scratch paper before you read anything. And with that information, you can create a shopping list. Then when you read, you know what you are looking for. So we read the requirement, and then we are reading very carefully. It's not units, it's revenue. You gotta read very carefully, and we write the formula down. And we gotta find fixed costs and the CS ratio. So we make a shopping list. And then we can get the break-even point. Step-by-step -step approach. If you didn't know break-even point, you're not going to be able to figure it out just by reading the question, guys. So you would have to guess and move on. OK, so at that point, we find the information that we need. OK, all of that is there. and. We identify the info and we can do the math and we can arrive at the correct answer, guys. Okay? So when we have theoretical questions, we're always eliminating. When we have numerical questions, we're always looking, we're, we're, we're deploying the template or the formula. We make a shopping list, a step-by-step -step approach and then we find the numbers that we need, okay? Every time. Now, you're gonna find some questions that look like this. Ah, one second. I recommend that you start making a mind map. Visual learning is a nice approach. There's so much happening on computer screens nowadays I recommend you get a notebook and you can make a mind map of every syllabus area. So here's a mind map I made with my students about decision making. And we're making sure on the course that we try every topic. Guys, you can do this at home. It's a great way to think about your studies in a new way. And it's a great way to connect the ideas. So I recommend you make a big page, a mind map for every syllabus area and check things off as you do them, okay? Now, you're also gonna see a question like this. Guys, you're gonna see difficult questions. This one is difficult. Look at it. It's difficult because, for one, it's presented in a storytelling format. The information is not in a neat table, but the words and the numbers are mixed together. Boy, there's a lot of figures to pick out of that. And then we see that it is variance analysis. Okay, so it's very easy at this point to panic. Okay, it's difficult. And if you've seen the movie The Matrix, if you remember Neo, the protagonist, he's chased by the bad guys quite often, and especially at the beginning. You cannot think straight. You cannot use the uh, frontal cortex. You cannot use <clears throat> the information processing part of your brain when you are in flight and fight mode, right? The, the amygdala part of your brain is in charge. So it's very important. You gotta be practicing these questions so you are ready for this and you do not panic. 
Guys, it looks like a difficult question, but I look at the answers and I see that they are theoretical. So now, I, now I'm, I'm stumbling upon something that I recognize when I practice questions. Very often, the difficult ones, they're not difficult if you step back and you look at them. Guys, so what I'm going to do on scratch paper, we're looking at mix and yield variants. And I just have to figure out if they're favorable or adverse. So I'm not going to get out my calculator and go crazy. The model answer to this question showed using the calculator. But team, I'm going to sketch it out. The mix variance is about the ratio of the inputs only. Are we following the recipe? or are we using more of the cheap stuff or more of the expensive stuff? That's all it is, mix variance. Okay? Yield variance is about the output. Did the inputs yield the expected outputs? So when you're studying the variances, people, it's very easy to get lost in the calculations, but I want you to always step back. Make sure you can interpret the variances. Can you explain what they mean? Right? You're going to get a large percentage of marks are also interpretation. So team, now that I know that, I read the first sentence and I see that to get out 19 units of X, we put in eight of A and 12 of B. So eight plus 12 is 20. So 20 in, 19 out. 20 in, 19 out. I also see that A is the cheap stuff and B is the expensive ingredient. Guys, so right away, I'm visualizing, I'm sketching 20 in, 19 out. A is cheap, B is expensive, and the ratio of cheap to expensive is 8 to 12. Now, I write that down on my scratch paper, 8 to 12. Now I read the next paragraph, and I see that the actual was 900 and 1,100. Guys, if I just cross off those zeros, I can compare it. It's 9 and 11, isn't it? So look at that. 9 is greater than 11 but they used more of the cheap, less of the expensive. So we see that the mix variance is favorable without touching a calculator, people. Give me a thumbs up if that made sense. You can arrive at the correct answer without a calculator if you step back. Okay? So people, if you do not panic, if you follow time management, okay, you can get to the right answer and you can be like Neo at the end of the movie when he is in a higher state of consciousness and he recognizes that the power of the mind is better than the power of greater than those computers. So people, all day long on my course, I'm coaching get in the neo mindset. Look at these questions. Is there an easier way to do it? Don't panic. And if it's a difficult one, flag it and come back later. But you don't need to get emotional and panic. Guys, 
objective test questions, the most difficult. You got to read the question first. What do you need to do? You got to sketch out the templates, make a shopping list. You carefully read the question, looking at all of the words. Every word is there for a reason. Got to find the key information. Eliminate anything that is a distractor. Then step back and have a look at all of the answers. Very often you can eliminate one of them. I was doing a question earlier today and it was about a market size variance, right? And, and if the market went up, um, the wrong, the, then, then the market share should go up, everything being equal, right? So you can't have everything being equal, it has to go up, right? So with logic, I was able to eliminate one of them. So if you can do that three or four times, that's going to help you with one or two guesses. That's going to put you from 48 to 50 or 52. Right, so I cannot stress enough the importance of this OT exam technique. Okay, time consuming ones last. When time is up, move on. Guys, the examiner's report, it's not telling me anything new lately, same problems. Guys, if you go into the examiner's report, there are extra questions that you can practice. It's a very cool resource if you're looking for some more questions, okay? In the examiner's report, they also explain how the distractors are built up. And let me give you a spoiler. The distractors are based on the most common mistakes. So if you look at a couple of those common mistakes, you're gonna see like how, those distractors, you're gonna put yourself in the mindset of the question writers, okay? Um, so section A and section B are nicely covered there and you have new questions to do. So I recommend at some point when you are uh, frustrated with question practice in your book. If, you, if you're looking for something fresh to do, block out an hour and a half and try the questions in the examiner's report, okay? You got a couple of new ones. Guys, section C. There are a lot of resources out there on section C, okay? I've got a YouTube channel you might have seen. I've got lots of section C. You've got open tuition. So you got lots of section C help out there. You've got all of the ACCA resources. You've got the mock exam debrief video. So I'm feeling like section C is less mysterious than section A and B. Guys, but I want to tell you in section C, if you want to get more marks, focus on the writing skills. This is where people are not giving their answers enough love. Too much calculating, not enough writing. So if you happen to see a requirement like this, evaluate a decision, okay, to outsource production, from a non-financial perspective, five marks. Very important, you find a number of marks. Five marks, five ideas. Remember, there's a human being at the other end of your exam looking for your ideas. You must communicate in a complete sentence. Okay. No sentence fragments, no bullet point lists. 
Evaluate means express some kind of judgment. Is it good or bad? Okay. And you've got to use clues from the little story. So your calculator will not help you here. Whenever you are writing in your PM exam, I recommend that you think first and you plan out your ideas. So for example, in this question, I thought of these ideas and I made them headings. Quality, control, solvency, IP risk, etc. Guys, give me a plus or a thumbs up if that makes sense. When you are writing, you got to plan before you write. Five marks, five ideas. Make it easy for the marker to find your ideas. Segment your writing. Now, you get started writing and just one or two little sentences. Quality. The outsource company may use less labor. That's not evaluation. That's just description, which means more, manuf more defects and more warranty claims. So right there, that's the problem, OK? Control. The company will lose control from the outsourcing contract. For example, they may have minimum and maximum order quantities, less flexibility. The outsource company is new. There's a risk they may go bankrupt and leave Robert with no solution for the outsourced part. Look at this. As I'm getting to the end, I might write a little bit less. The outsource company could use robber's blueprints and make and sell extra units, right? Stealing. So make sure when you are writing, it's looking like this. Not a bullet point list of fragments, not a, a massive paragraph with no segmenting. Okay? So really important, give the writing your love. Throw down an overall comment if you're evaluating performance. There could be a mark for it. There's often a mark for it. It just takes a moment to do that, OK? Overall, it seems like too, it's too risky to outsource their main component to the new company. All righty, guys. Word processing tips. When they're asking you to discuss or explain something or assess, you got to use sentences. You got to remember, one mark is one idea. Uh, several short sentences or one longer sentence is what I mean there, OK? Several tiny sentences or one combined sentence, OK? A complete idea. Use subheadings. Now, if they ask you to evaluate the performance of a company from the financial perspective, you got to do some calculations. I want you to remember these get about half of a mark. So if they say in the question, evaluate the performance of the company for 20 marks, seven marks calculations, 13 marks discussion, guys, you can do seven workings. If each working has year one and year two, then you know, right? That's 14 workings or even just do five. I would do five, so I would get um, five out of seven marks, and then go to the writing, because it's the writing that's more difficult. The writing takes more time. If you had more time, you could come back and do more, do more calculations. Guys, in the same situation, when you are evaluating performance, you got to pick the measures carefully. You got to pick the measures that have meaning in your assessment. So if one cost only went up 1% and another cost went up 50% and it's a fixed cost, right? The 50% the, the, the increase is probably more interesting than the 1% increase. 
potentially. So I would focus on areas that are going to be most interesting, that might have the most impact. Okay. <clears throat> now, don't be afraid to use a table when needed to organize your work. So if I'm evaluating performance of a company, I like to make a table, metric, results, working, discussion. So it's nice and neat. No marks for grammar and spelling, guys. Okay, remember that. No marks for grammar and spelling. So don't waste time trying to make it look like the model solution. We can't do that. We don't have time. We don't have spell check. <clears throat> if the marketing team understands your idea, you will get the credit. Now, spreadsheets. There was more trouble with this four years ago when it was new and where everyone's trying to get their head around it. Guys, the materials are all updated for spreadsheet work. You guys know about spreadsheets now. There's lots of information on the ACCA um, website about it. The examiner's reports, the model solutions show how what to do as well. So there's less mystery here about the spreadsheets. I recommend, though, when you are practicing questions, imagine that you are a musician about to do a performance. Musicians use metronomes. I want you to practice to time. Set the timer. If it's 10 mark requirement, 17 minutes. Try it. Figure out where you end. When time is up, how far did you get? Keep going. Come back to it another day. Try the same question. Again and again, try to go faster. Get your tempo up. I would recommend, some people ask me, Steve, do I have to do every question in the book to get a pass? No. You've got to try a question. You've got to make sure you've studied every area of the syllabus before you try to do every question. And when you're doing section C, I recommend you try a question twice and then move on. So you really master the exam technique. And then you have something that you learned that you use when you try another question. Okay, very important, very, very important. Guys, spreadsheet tips. Try the questions multiple times. Always lay out a template before you begin, okay? Lay out your work step by step. If you are doing a variance question, actual quantity, actual price, actual quantity, standard price, the difference is that variance. Lay it all out before you do anything. Now, you do not need perfection because they will be applying the own figure rule. Do the easiest workings first, most difficult workings last. If you run out of time, you did the easy, easy things, you ran out of time on the difficult part, okay? So you can exploit the own figure rule. When you have big formulas, if you're doing, let's say you're doing a multi-product cost volume profit chart, don't try to pack that whole thing into one cell. The bigger your formula, the more likely it is you're going to have an error. So whenever it's possible, break it step by step. You are more likely to get own figure rule when the markers can follow what you're doing. You're less likely to have a mistake. Now, don't forget to interpret your results. For example, if they say assess the make or buy decision, you got to arrive at an evaluation. Evaluate the decision to make or buy. 
advise on the decision. You got to say, based on these results, the company should make the units. Even if your answer is wrong, if your interpretation of your own number is correct, you will get the credit. Okay, very important. That's usually the easiest mark. Guys, I think you know this. You got to know the basic functions in the spreadsheets at this point. You got to know how to use the sum function, the maximum, the minimum, that helps you with maxi max, maxi min. Average can help you if you're doing a weighted average CS ratio. Occasionally, we have to get a square root. So we can do that like this. No, make sure you know how to do a square root, raising it to the power of 0 0.5 or 1 half. Um, if you're doing learning curve, you could potentially need to get the logarithm of 2. All right? So you got to know your spreadsheet tips, people. Uh, spread these basic functions. And you have 19 days, plenty of time to practice. <clears throat> Now, this is something that I read about in the examiner's report. You can't, if you're writing something in the spreadsheet, don't cover it with a number because the markers cannot resize. So make sure everything is readable in the presentation that you are giving when you are done, right? So if you can't read it, the other people using your document can't read it. And no marks for making it look pretty or financial management skills. Okay. So avoid trying to make it pretty. Guys, I recommend our webinar is winding down. You got 19 days. It is essential right now, after this webinar, download the document that I gave you. I gave you a template. You must do something every day. Put a topic in every day. Every day you do an OT quest, you do a handful of OT questions. When you have more time, you do a section C or a section B. But you are working to a series of daily objectives rather than this ethereal goal of passing some exam. Every day, you want to get 5% closer to passing. OK? So 19 days is almost 20 days. If you can just get 5% closer, that's almost 100%, right? So you can get a pass. With 19 days. Guys, you're going to make a study plan. You're going to do the mock exam that we put on the ACCA website. You are going to watch the debrief video. All the exam technique that you need is there demonstrated for you. Okay, we put a lot of work into making these resources. They are awesome. You really got to do this. Past exam questions every day. Make your list of good and bad topics. You've got to use the ACCA resources, the coolest new resource. I'm using it on my course in the next room here. We love it. OK? Next time, I'm going to use it like so much more now that I know how cool it is. OK? We got other free resources there. There's YouTubes out there. I've got a YouTube site with 20 or so debriefs on there. My colleagues have great videos. So there, there are plenty of resources out there for you. Um, we got the mock exam. 
We've got the examiner's report, the awesome ACCA YouTube channel, okay? That's probably the best one, to be honest. Right there, you've got great tutors putting up great content. You've got the ACCA experts giving you their own help. So guys, the ACCA YouTube channel, right? One of the best. Guys, Study Hub, absolutely the coolest new resource. You got to get in there right after this video. It's got free content. You've got quizzes that you can do when you're traveling to work. Okay, you've got study notes so you can learn and you've got revision and practice questions, which you need now. Okay, it's easy to log in. You go to my ACCA and you can get in there. This is what it's all about people. Let's take a closer look inside Study Hub, your ultimate study resource. It's a digital hub. Study Hub gives you online access to study materials from ACCA. It works like an ebook with added interactivity. It's a knowledge hub. Study chapters help to increase your understanding. A visual overview shows all the topics in each chapter, so it's easy to see how they link up. It's a revision hub. End of chapter quizzes put your knowledge to the test. The multiple choice questions are automatically marked so you can review your performance. Flashcards test your knowledge of key definitions. Check your answer against the definition on the reverse of the card. Practice questions help you prepare for your exams. You can instantly compare your answers to the suggested solutions. It's an anywhere hub. Whenever and wherever you want to work, Study Hub is there on web and mobile. It's a success hub. 79% of students said Study Hub made them more confident. 90% said they would use Study Hub again. Use Study Hub to help boost your progression. Just go to your My ACCA account and click on the Study Hub link. Guys, that's your homework right after this video. Everything you need for practicing questions. Resitters, if you need fresh questions because you've been through your book, go into the Study Hub. Study Hub is, I think it's the best because as you know, it's up to date because ACCA themselves made the questions and updated it, right? So if you have an old book, do the Study Hub questions. You know you're studying the right, the right topics. Resitters, what are you gonna do differently? I'll tell you the three things that I did to fix my problem. One, I started studying in the mornings instead of after work. I changed my study time. I was much fresher. Two, I learned about exam technique. I stopped reading the books and I started practicing the questions. Three, I didn't focus on quantity of questions but I focused on quality of question practice. I redid the questions till I could do the whole thing in the time. Only then would I shift to a new question. I didn't do every question in the book, but I tried a piece of every syllabus area and guys, I got through it. Guys, those are my tips for your upcoming exam. Let me answer your questions for the next 15 minutes, but stay calm. I know you guys can do this, okay? Put the past in the past. You got 19 days, make a study plan, questions every day, block out your free time. Guys, without further ado, questions. Here's a question. When you're doing performance measurement, evaluate the performance of the company. Do you need to show your workings or can I just put the figure from the calculator in? Guys, if your answer is correct, you will get full credit. 
If your answer is wrong, you will get no credit. If you show your workings and the examiner can see what you did, you might get partial credit. So do you need to show your workings? The answer is no. You will get credit if your answer is correct. Should you show your workings? I recommend that it's a good idea in the word processor. Just organize your thoughts, right? Write those workings in and then, then plug the numbers into your scientific calculator and you get the answer. You got your workings there to cover you for potential own figure rule. Here's a question. Should I organize my response for section C on a separate sheet or would it be more effective to structure my sheet with the plan at the top and the corresponding answer at the bottom? <clears throat> Guys, who I, first of all, you don't get to choose anything. You are given a word processing document or a spreadsheet document. There's no choice. You press next, you get what you get. Do not organize some kind of a plan and then start doing the work. You plan by making the steps of your template, the steps of what you got to calculate. And after you think about the steps, do the math. You don't say what you're going to do and then do it. If you're writing a little essay on evaluation of outsourcing, just say what you're going to say. The plan is your subheading. So you don't need to plan. You don't need to uh, pick a spreadsheet or a word processor. Here's a question on exam stress, overwhelming pressure. Exam stress. Guys, some tips. One, the exam is 19 days away. Forget about it. What are you going to do tomorrow? Can you learn about relevant costing tomorrow and do three OTs? On the weekend, can you do the full practice exam one? Wake up at 7.30 in the morning, go to 10.30, do practice exam number one. Come back in the afternoon, go back through what you got wrong. On Sunday, can you work on another topic and try a section? That is how you get rid of the stress. Don't worry about the exam. Make a study plan, execute it. When you're in the exam, take it section by section. All you got to focus on is section A. All you got to do is get eight out of 15 correct. You can do it. Easy ones first. Eliminate the distractors. If you have to guess, can you eliminate one? Then go to section C. Focus on what's in front of you. Not what you did, not what you're going to do. 34 minutes. Okay? Meditation helps. I learned how to meditate in the last couple of years. It's very helpful. So that's something that I do to relieve stress. But stay in the present, make a study plan, take things a step at a time. That's what I recommend to, to avoid the exam jitters or to reduce them. Guys, here's a question about graphs. You cannot draw any graphs in the exam. You know that, right? It's computer-based, you will not draw them. So there's a little bit of a disconnect because all of the teaching materials, they make you draw graphs. That's part of learning how to understand a graph. But once you have learned how to draw the graph once, don't draw it again. Go into the study hub, find questions there, and you need to interpret somebody else's graph. That's how it's going to work. Interpretation of somebody else's graph. What is line A? What is line B? What is line C? What is point C? What is point E? Blah, 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 right? Interpretation.
Guys, <clears throat> question about the Excel functions in, X, in, in the spreadsheet. Um, <clears throat> there are ACCA resources, 100% for spreadsheet tips. I actually also have a YouTube that goes through it. So you can, you can put Steve Willis ACCA into YouTube. My video pops up. I've got a video on spreadsheet tips. I'll show you that right there. Here's a question for a working adult. I'm halfway done with my module. What do you suggest I do? Guys, I feel your pain. I did my exams later in life than many of you. I was in my 30s when I decided to do ACCA. I was already a manager in a company. I was quite busy. And it's a professional exam. We always feel like we didn't study enough. It's, 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 all, it's just a fact of life. If you feel like you're not done studying, nothing you can do about that about that. You've only got 19 days left. What I recommend you do, I, I said it over and over, now you got a study plan. If you're only halfway through, there's still time to do two syllabus areas, okay? If you block out your time and focus on doing questions. If you are short on time, do not be reading the big crazy textbook. What you should be do doing, read summarize notes, go into the study hub, look at the flashcards, learn by doing a question, read the flashcard, try an easy question. Did you understand it? Yes, try another question. Did you get it wrong? How did I get it wrong? Check out the answers. See if you can learn by doing the questions. That is what I would recommend um, if you are, are behind on what you call the study phase. Avoid the big book, get into the questions quickly, learn by doing questions. Here's a question on performance evaluation. Should I use a paragraph format or a tabular format? I highly recommend you use a table whenever possible in the word processors. When they ask you to evaluate performance, if they tell you five marks are for workings, make a table with five or six rows, a little extra, maybe, maybe you, you, you think of something. Then you organize working, metric, metric, workings, result, comments, discussion. And then when you are discussing, Make sure everything that you say is linked to how or why something happened. What's the evidence in the little story? Is it linked to another number? Guys, I got time for one more question. And suppose my answer is wrong, but my interpretation is based on my answer. Will I get credit? Guys, I mentioned this before. Your interpretation, you will get full marks for your interpretation if you have interpreted your number correctly, if it's right or if it's wrong. So don't get hung up in the numbers. Do the easy workings first. Something is difficult, try your best and move on. Don't sweat it, okay? I would just do, if I don't know what to do, try an assumed answer, just try something, get to a final figure so you could write about that. Richa, were you gonna come back on? My colleague from ACCA? Hello. Yes. Hi. <laughs> so we are doing great with the questions and we 
have received lot many and i believe that you have been able to cover almost quite a lot of them based on the kind of questions we had and um we are just now running short of time and uh, before i close the session we close the session i would like to ask you any closing tip you would like to give to the students who are going to sit for september 23 exam also keeping in mind the marginally marginally failed students as well if something you would like to suggest them i know you have already talked a lot about the resitors for them as well but before we close if you can just let the students know the last minute absolutely tips. friends you got a lot of riding on this exam i know that i feel that i've been there your family might be pressuring you work might be pressuring you maybe you have some resets guys put all of that in the past nothing you can do about it okay you got 19 days you guys can get a pass make a study plan focus on daily objectives that get you closer every day to a pass that's going to keep you from panicking question practice is key get into the new study hub it's a fresh bunch of questions it's also better than a book because the exam is computer based so you're you're learning off the computer it's the same medium okay so you're going to make a study plan you're going to learn from the past questions and you're going to make a list what you get right what you get wrong focus on what you get wrong okay work on exam technique remember time management do the mock exam and the practice exam to simulate the experience guys do all of that and i wish you the best in september i know you can do it great thank you so much steve uh, first My of pleasure. all for being with us here in this session and um, big thanks to the team who is supporting us from the back end helping us deliver the session successfully and also so many thanks to all the students who are there today with us live and um, wish them all the very best for their exams exam preparations and mocks as well so with this we bring this session to a close thank you everyone bye guys